Interestingly enough, this is the first time that they're ever called a nation. The rest of the times they're called the Israelites or the people or the children of God or the children of Israel. This is the first time they're called a nation. And why is that? Because they're setting foot in the nation that is going to be called by their name, Israel, at this very moment. So now that they are in their nation, they are a nation of people for the first time ever. God begins to call them a nation. And it says that after all of the nation crosses over the Jordan, Joshua takes the 12 men that he previously was told to select in chapter 3. This is one from each tribe of Israel. And he says, okay, I told y'all I needed y'all for something special. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go back over the Jordan, into the Jordan, where the priests are still standing with the Ark of the Covenant. So when they... They got into the river. These priests stopped in the center and they stood there until everyone had gone across and they were still standing there. Joshua called these 12 men and he said, I need you to go back to the very place that these priests are standing. And I want each of you to get a rock and pick it up and put it on your shoulder. So this is no small rock. This is a big stone that they're going to get and put on their shoulder and carry back across the river. And when they get across this river, they're going to set these 12 stones up as a memorial for the people. And this is going to make a permanent structure. They're big stones, and it's going to make this permanent structure that everyone is going to be able to see. And God says, I want this to be here to remind you all of what happened this day, how I brought you across the Jordan River on dry ground. And when your children see this and your children's children, and they ask, what is the meaning of these stones? You're going to tell them not only how I brought you across the Jordan on dry ground, but also how I brought your fathers across the Red Sea on dry ground. And then your children are going to know who I am. And everyone will see my power. They'll understand that I am Adonai, master of the earth. And they will fear me and they will learn to obey me because of that. This is chapter four at the very end, verse 24. And he says, so all the people of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. They'll know my power and that they may fear the Lord, your God forever. And if you fear God, you'll obey him. And so he says, this is all being done for you. And then I want you to spread the word about my power and let them know that if I am powerful enough to stop the river from flowing and to part the Red Sea in order to let you go across, then I am a God to be feared. I have power and that will compel them to obey me always. This is how you will spread the word about me and help your children to obey me and remind yourselves that I am a God that needs to be obeyed, that I brought you into this land for a purpose and you are my people and you're supposed to do what I tell you. God does this often. He tells them to set up a memorial for this exact purpose over and over and over again. And I think this is something that we should maybe take note of also. You know, we have things like birthdays and anniversaries where we take this day and we remember something that happened on this day, specifically a wedding anniversary. That's what it's there for is to remind you how you committed your life to this person and for you to think back over the years of what you've had together and for it to, you know, increase your love for one another and your commitment towards each other. And I think it's good for us to do that with several things. Maybe to even have objects that remind us of certain things. We have the wedding ring, right? That reminds us that we are committed to one another. And that is what, when we see it, we're supposed to be thinking of. And we should do that with several things. 
especially things that have to do with God. Whenever God has done something wonderful for us, we should make some way to commemorate it. We need to do things that will remind us of who God is and what he has done for us, especially whenever we're down, we're having a hard time, you know, having faith in God for some reason that we can remind ourselves of all the things that he's done for us. And then we're like, I forget, you know, I'm just discouraged right now, but I know God is there. I know his power for me and I know his love for me and I trust him. Those are good things for us to do.